<laughs> Hello, BookTube. Sorry about the odd setup. Trying something new here. Uh, lots of new things here. It's not supposed to happen, <laughs> but nevertheless. Uh, I'm trying to see here if this new setup will actually work for the standard fare of a book haul. So we're going we're gonna to try that now, see if that works. <laughs> I've got a book haul ready to hand. Imagine that. <laughs> so, so let's see what this first one is. And if this if this setup doesn't work, then I'll, I'll figure out one that does. Uh, what have we got here? This is new from Harvard University Press. Another egghead book. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is The Enigma of Reason by Hugo Mercier and Dan Sperber. <laughs> A groundbreaking look at how reason works and how it doesn't. Reason, we are told, is what makes us human, the source of our knowledge and wisdom. If reason is so useful, why didn't it evolve in other animals? If reason is that reliable, why do we produce so much thoroughly reasoned nonsense? In their groundbreaking account of the evolution and workings of reason, Hugo Mercier and Dan Sperber set out to solve this double enigma. Reason, they argue, with a compelling mix of real life and experimental evidence, is not geared to solitary use, uh, to arriving at better beliefs and decisions on our own. What reason does, rather, is help us justify our beliefs and actions to others, convince them through argumentation, and evaluate the justifications and arguments that others address to us. In other words, the first question is answered. <laughs> right? The reason it didn't evolve in other animals is because it's extremely detrimental to a species. <laughs> and it's something of a miracle that ours hasn't wiped us out already. <laughs> Uh, uh, not that I, I mean, this is semantics, right? The, something, what, what these authors almost certainly mean in the umbrella term of reason has evolved many times in many other species. Uh, but anyway, this is, this is uh, out already, so, so it's a bit, of a bit of an undertaking. Now, see, we're, I'm trying to figure out where things go here. Uh, for all I know, tomorrow's mail will look different than this. So, so uh, We'll just, uh, I'll bounce around a bit, I'll experiment, and then we'll see what works out in the end, what shakes down. In the meantime, there's nothing to stop us from looking at these things. Plenty of booktube channels look worse. <laughs> All right, that might or might not be true. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, fantastic. Look at that. Do I have a pub sheet for this? No, this is, this is a new romance in hardcover by Amanda Quick. The great Amanda Quick. It's called The Girl Who Knew Too Much, which is a shame, because it means I'll neither be reading it nor reviewing it. Uh, but let's see, what it's, let's see what it's about here. Uh, it transports us to 1930s California, where glamour and seduction spawn a multitude of sins. Right up in Amanda Quick's alley. When Hollywood moguls and stars want privacy, they head to an idyllic small town on the coast, where the exclusive Burning Cove Hotel caters to their every need. It's where reporter Irene Glasson finds herself staring down at a beautiful actress at the bottom of a pool. The dead woman was a red hot secret about had a red hot secret about an up and coming leading man, Nick Tremaine, a scoop that Irene couldn't resist, especially since she just she's just a rookie at a third rate gossip rag. But now Irene's investigation into the drowning threatens to tear down the wall of illusion that is so deftly built around the famous actor, and there are powerful men willing to do anything to protect their investment. Hmm. No pub sheet, so I have no idea when it comes out. I imagine it's out already. Uh, huh. Amanda Quick in a 1930s historical novel. That's interesting. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Okay. This is Tokyo Boogie Woogie. <laughs> I wonder if I was going to get this. Uh, this comes out from Harvard University Press, and uh, it's out already again. Uh, it's The Rise of Pop Music in Japan uh, by Hiromu Nagahara. Uh, so, it, Japan's pop era and its discontents. It's the subtitle. How like, uh, oh, many discontents it could have. Uh, this is the first English language history of the origins and impact of the Japanese pop music industry. Huh. Okay. All right. Uh, so it's it's an April release. It's not at all Steve's cup of tea, but I imagine there's some of you out there that would love it. <laughs> I will certainly read it, though. Uh, I try to read everything that Harvard says me, because there's got a lot of smart people doing the picking. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's see what's next. Oh, 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 oh,
<laughs> it's President McKinley. It's a thousand page biography of President McKinley. <laughs> In this great American story, historian Robert Mary brilliantly evokes the life and presidency of William McKinley, cut short by an assassin, often lost in the shadow of his brilliant and flamboyant successor, Theodore Roosevelt. He portrays the 25th president as a transformative figure, the first modern Republican. President McKinley established the U.S. as an imperial power. In the Spanish-American War, he kicked Spain out of the Caribbean. In the Pacific, he acquired Hawaii and the Philippines through war and diplomacy. He took the country to... Uh, to a strict gold standard, developed the doctrine of fair trade, forced the open door to China, forged a special relationship with Great Britain. He established a non-colonial imperialism that took America global. McKinley paved the way for the bold leadership of Theodore Roosevelt, who built his own presidency in part on McKinley's accomplishments and got the credit for them. <laughs> so this is a gigantic reevaluation of President McKinley. And it is due in September. <laughs> and Steve is all over it like taffeta on a prize maid's dress. <laughs> I am going to review this. Somewhere. Somehow. <laughs> oh my. Alright, well the rest of this mail hall is probably downhill from here, but at least you can see the baby. <laughs> That's one of the things about this arrangement that isn't going to work, I don't think. Because in about half an hour it's going to dawn on her that she's not pressed against me and then she's not going to like that she's going to start complaining so i might have to arrange something else the whole key will be where the camera goes uh but i'll figure it out <laughs> we'll figure it out together uh all right what's this next one here uh oh oh great uh okay do i again do i have a pub sheet there's something in here oh god help us what is this? Oh, okay, it's a little, it's a little, uh, it's not really a pub sheet. <laughs> but, okay, so this is a paperback that comes out, uh, again, now. Uh, I'm not really seeing, it's, a, oh, sorry, it's Richard Tillinghast. It's Istanbul. It's a very nice looking thing. And I'm wondering, of course, the natural, the very first question that a, a reviewer wants to know is, uh, is this a paperback reprint? And did the hardcover come out recently? Okay, it's it was it came out in 2012, but I want to know, when did this book appear? Did this come out last year and I just missed it? Uh, now we have the paperback? University of Chicago Press, I'm thinking so. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not seeing much in the way of U.S. blurbs. Maybe people ignored it. Maybe it's terrible. <laughs> uh, huh. All right, well, uh, a little mystery to solve there. Uh, then we'll move on to this. Uh, what could this be? Oh, fantastic. All right, great. This is the uh, the finished copy, uh, also due right away, uh, of Walk Away by Cory Doctorow, which is great. This is fantastic. I read the advanced copy, which I guess, oh, now, in this new setup, you can see all of my advanced copies underneath the the, uh, the, the picture over there. Huh, you'll see the mess there, and oh my god, it's hideous. Uh, okay, so, great. This is... The, uh, oh, look at that. Oh, wow. So the dust jacket looks like that until you take that off, and then you've got one girl in a crowd. Oh, thankfully it's not called Girl in the Crowd, or I couldn't read it. <laughs> oh, boy. Fantastic. And it has blurbs from Neil Stevenson, Kim Stanley Robinson, William Gibson, and Edward Snowden. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're aimed at a demographic, but that's still pretty impressive. Oh. Uh, Great, I'm glad to have a finished copy of that. Fantastic. Uh, and then we'll do the last one. It's this great big envelope. Uh, this thing here. So it'll be probably an oversized book. Kind of I am still filming on the iPhone. Uh, but the, the, the whole arrangement has changed. The feng shui has changed. And I may change it again. This is, this is, was the, is the temporary result of a lot of uh, heaving and hoeing by topless teenagers. <laughs> Uh, and I had goals in mind for what I wanted, but I confess, and I shouldn't because it's not a booktuber thing to say, I confess that the setup of how I would film my videos was not one of those things. <laughs> but I uh, I will fix it. 
All right, so this is from Princeton. So all the all the major presses are covered here, except Harvard. Uh, this comes out in May, and it is a companion to an art exhibit. Um, it's called Write on Exhibit. Frank Lloyd Wright's Architectural Exhibitions. Big, big, uh, big thing here. Uh, more than 100 exhibitions of Frank Lloyd's Wright were mounted during his lifetime. Many of these shows were, in fact, organized by the architect himself and considered as crucial to his self-presentation as were his extensive writings. Wright used these exhi exhibitions to promote his designs, court new viewers, and persuade his detractors. In Wright on Exhibit, independent scholar Catherine Smith offers the first history of this essential but little studied aspect of the esteemed architect's life and work. The exhibits that he set up himself, uh, his own work. Okay, so this is due in May, early May. Uh, a little bit tricky for me. I think I'm the only person on earth who thinks he was talentless. So I'm, <laughs> I'm you know, there's a little bit of a burden going in to a Frank Lloyd Wright book, <laughs> but, uh, but I'll do my best. Uh, so let's see here. We're going to work this in reverse. This is, we, but we got to do this. This is a signature now. <laughs> this is right on exhibit. Walk away. Cory Doctorow's new book. Cory Doctorow is great. If you haven't read him, read him. <laughs> uh, President McKinley. Hail to the chief. <laughs> Uh, paperback of Istanbul, Tokyo Boogie Woogie about Tokyo pop scene, uh, The Girl Who Knew Too Much uh, by Amanda Quick, and The Enigma of Reason. How's that for variety? <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so that's a slightly discombobulated new mail haul, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll wrap this up now and see how it comes out. And I'll see you soon, book two. Thank you.